Welcome to church. Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made, and we are rejoicing, and we get to be glad in it. We're going to rejoice because God is good and God is faithful, and we're celebrating the greatest thing of all, his birthday. Come on now. (laughs) Hey, everybody. My name is Pastor Chris Deegan, and I get to lead Harvest Music Live. This is my lovely bride. I'm Tell them your name. I'm Yolanda Deacon. <laughs> right, Privileged right. to be. Hey, yes, yes, <laughs> yes, baby. Look at God, you're so uh, good. Yes. Hey, we've introduced ourselves. Yes. So now it's time for you to introduce yourself right there in the comment section. And like, share, and comment all service long because, like we always say, this is one of the greatest ways to evangelize because social media goes all around the world. It's so easy. Just the click of a button. So all you have to do is just click that like, click that share, and comment. Now, uh, (laughs) ring the bell. Subscribe. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm so sorry. Ring the bell. Ring the bell. Ring those Christmas bells. (laughs) Silver bell. All right. Subscribe so every time we are live, you're notified. Ding. (laughs) Absolutely right. So you don't miss a moment of what God is doing and what he wants to do in your life when you join. Amen. All right, well, it's holidays at the heart, the most wonderful time of the year. And so New Year's is coming, and we have a New Year's service Sunday, December the 31st at 10 a.m. We want you to join us as we praise out the old year and in the new. Amen. Kiddos are not left out. They've got a poppin' New Year's party. That's going to be awesome. I want to be in the tab and with them for the poppin' New Year's party, They're right? They're going to have so much fun. That's right. Well, yes. the most wonderful time of the year, and we've got a video so you can learn more about it. Here we go, and then we'll be right back. There's no better place to celebrate the season than Holidays at the Harv. On Christmas Eve morning, December 24th, join Dr. Rod Parsley and the World Harvest Church community for an unforgettable Holy Communion service, followed by tons of festive fun for the whole family. From live reindeer to carriage rides to pictures with Santa and Mrs. Claus, you'll make lots of merry memories. Plus, every family and child will go home with a special gift. Your children will also get to experience a live walk through the Bible, Nativity Edition, where the story of our Savior's birth comes to life, along with indoor snowball fights, Christmas crafts, and more. So make your plans and bring Bring the the fam! fam! December 24th at 10 a.m. for a Christmas Eve celebration you won't want to miss, only at World Harvest Church. Child care is available for ages 0 to 5th grade, and for more information, visit whc.life. Now, all these announcements and much, much more can always be found at whc.live. Now, we are going into the tab because service will begin in In 90 90 seconds. seconds. Good morning, church. Come on, it's time to bless the Lord together. Here we go. We're going to kick it off with a Christmas song. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Let's go. You're going to see the words on your screen. We want you to sing along with us. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, come, all ye faith. Come 
joyful, come praising. Jesus is born in Bethlehem. Oh, come and behold him, the king of the ages. Jesus is born in Bethlehem. Jesus is born. You're glad about it, church. Come on. together. Oh, come and let us adore. You say. Let us adore him. Oh, come and let us adore him. Christ. Sing it again. Oh, come let us. of his great love for us and then let us adore Christ the Lord Oh, 
of your goodness. We think of how much you love us and we adore you. Come on, hands up all across the building if you're able. Everyone joining us online and social media, come on, let's worship the King. Lord, we thank you for your goodness and we're just amazed by your love for us, God. And we thank you that you're not keeping record of our wrongs, but you see the blood of your son Jesus applied to our life. We've got access today. Yeah, God, yeah, God, yeah, God, yeah, God. Thank you, Lord. You give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness. You give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. Yes, and great are you, Lord. It's your breath and our lungs, so we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath and our lungs, so we pour out our praise to you only. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great are you, Lord. Tell him, tell him, tell him. Come on. You are, love. you are love. You bring light. You bring, you bring light, light to the darkness. darkness. You give hope. You restore. You restore every heart. Every heart. No heart that God that can't love and fix and bring back to life. So you know where your help comes from. Lift it up. It's your breath.
circumstance and every season and circumstance we still say somebody that's walked with him I wonder if you're still testifying great are you Lord are great you do miracles so great there is no one else like you there is no one else like you for you are great you do miracles so great there is no one else like you there is no one, tell him, tell him, for you are great, you do miracles so great. There is no one else, there is no one else like you, there is no one else, there is no one else like you, for you are great. you do miracles, you do miracles, I choose to believe it. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. There is no one else. For you deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship. Can't help but do it. We lift your holy name. You deserve all the glory, yes. Lord, receive the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we lift your holy name. For you are, you do. There is no one else. There is no one How good he's been! Hallelujah to the 
Blessed and wonderful name. Blessed and powerful name. Come on, let's do our best to not take it for granted. But to worship that name that's been exalted above every other name. Jesus. 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 What a privilege to get to speak it. Amen. Woo. Come on, man, just rumble right there for about 10 seconds. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, anointed one. Lily and every valley. The bright and the morning star. Jesus, that name that's been exalted above sickness. Jesus, the name above depression and oppression. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes. Well, if you're able, you can be seated this Sunday morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, good morning. Good morning. What a privilege and an honor it is to be sitting right here in the house of the Lord. We have freedom to worship Come Him. Come on now. I was just telling our children the other day in the car, I said, we are blessed because we're not sitting in a hospital room. We have hands to clap. We have hands to raise. We have healthy feet to walk, to jump, to stomp. Not everyone can say that. We have a voice to proclaim the name of Jesus. And it breaks everything. Everything that's not of God is broken at the yes, name of amen. Jesus. It's a powerful name. And it should be protected and used only in glorifying Jesus or breaking the enemy's attacks. Amen? That's right. Amen. And I tell you what, if you're sitting in a hospital room right now, you reference it. Yes. We just pray the healing power yes. of yes, Almighty amen. God over you. Right here from Columbus, yes. Ohio, know this. Jesus. There is a room filled with people that we've Jesus. seen God heal and Jesus. move cancer and Jesus. diabetes. Jesus. No issue bigger than yes. our God. We send the yes. healing power of Almighty Almighty God, yes. right there where you are, Hallelujah. and we declare, take up your bed yes. and walk, says Hallelujah. the Lord. Put a praise Jesus, on it, Columbus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Woo. We glorify you. We glorify you. Hallelujah. Well, it's a great day to be a great day, and it's Absolutely. a great day to be here at the Harv. Good morning, everybody. Hey, y'all, so good to see everyone here in the house. And if you're a guest of ours, whether it's your first time here or first time in a long time, we welcome you to the Harv this Sunday morning. And we're so glad that you're here with us. We want to connect with you. Tell them how. Yes, there is a card in the seat back pocket right there in front of you. If you will grab that, fill it out, and let us know how you heard about the Harv. We call yes. Harv World Harvest Church. Let us know. And if you did not receive your gift this morning on the way in, we want to make sure before you leave today, you get that gift. Now you say, well, how can I get the gift? Where do I get it? I'm glad you asked. I'm going to let you know. So at each exit, there is a new here sign and a table with some balloons. They're red and green celebrating Christmas, which is Jesus's birthday, right? You will get that gift from one of our amazing Dream Team members today. If you did not get that this morning, make sure before you leave today, you grab that gift. That's right. Well, it's the most wonderful time of the year, and it's holidays right here at the Har. I know. I love it. I right? Love it. And we want to talk about our New Year service. We have a New Year celebration, praising out the old year and in the new. Ooh. Amen. Sunday, December the 31st at 10 a.m. Say 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Not p.m. Say 10 a.m. 10 a.m. 10 a.m. And the kiddos, they're not laughed at either, right? They've That's got a right. popping New Year's party. They're going to have an awesome time in Kid Harvest as well. That's right. And there's no greater way than bringing the New Year in and be in the house of the Lord and celebrating with our the body of Christ. Our family, your family. That's right. You're our family, our church family, and there's no better way to ever celebrate anything but being in the house of the Lord. That's right, darling. All right, well, we put together a little video to show you a little something, something about all the stuff coming up here at the Heart for the Holidays. So turn your attention towards the screens. Here we go. 
there's no better place to celebrate the season than Holidays at the Harv! On Christmas Eve morning, December 24th, join Dr. Rod Parsley and the World Harvest Church community for an unforgettable Holy Communion service, followed by tons of festive fun for the whole family. From live reindeer, to carriage rides, to pictures with Santa and Mrs. Claus, you'll make lots of merry memories. Plus, every family and child will go home with a special gift. Your children will also get to experience a live walk through the Bible, Nativity Edition, where the story of our Savior's birth comes to life, along with indoor snowball fights, Christmas crafts, and more. So make your plans and bring, bring the, the fam. fam! December 24th at 10 a.m. for a Christmas Eve celebration you won't want to miss, only at World Harvest Church. Child care is available for ages 0 to 5th grade, and for more information, visit whc.life. That's right. Well, next Sunday is our Christmas service, but it's also the service that we have designated as our All About the One. That's the Sunday that we as a church body, we make a concentrated effort to invite everybody that we can to get here to the house of the Lord. And here we go. Listen, the pressure is off. You don't have to win them to Jesus. You just right. got to get them here right. in the room so Jesus can work on them, right? That's right. So all month long, we have been giving you tools to help you reach your one. And this Sunday, we have got Vanna. Show the people. Does anybody remember Vanna White? Is that show still on? Got it. Vanna White. Here we go. So we've got these boxes filled with Christmas goodies, these Hershey Kisses, okay? But in there is a card attached with information for you to easily invite your one, your family, friends, co-workers. You're checking out at the grocery store and you just give that to them and you say, hey, I want you to join me if you would please for our Christmas service. It's Sunday morning at 10 a.m. God has changed my life. I believe he can change yours. Amen. Right. Right. And in addition to that, we're having all sorts of holiday fun because we've got a reindeer that you can see. We've got Santa Claus. We've got Mrs. Claus. We've got a horse-drawn carriage. What? So all these amazing things that you can tell people about as you invite them here to the Har for Christmas Sunday That's and are right. all about the one service. And it makes it so easy. You get to give something. Right. And then they all they, they get to get uh, to get because they get this little goodies, but then they come next Sunday and they get all the extra things plus the best thing of all, Jesus. That's right, darling. So it's it's a win-win situation. Absolutely. Very good. Those are available in all of our foyers as you exit today. I'm just saying they're not for you to eat again. They're for your one. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. All right. Well, speaking of giving, darling, today is our holiday ham giveaway. Woo, woo, woo. Right, right, right. So if you perhaps are in need or someone that you know is in need, we've got holiday hams for you. One for each family for those in need, right? And you can take advantage of that two ways. For those of us here in the tab, at the close of service, you can exit through these doors over here. You'll walk down what we call the Hall of Faith, and you can get your ham there and carry it out to your car. Or you can do it what I think is the easy way. You can go to our east parking lot for our distribution out there, and all you got to do is pop your trunk, and they place the ham in your trunk. That's right. Isn't that awesome? That's awesome. Absolutely. Okay, well, I think we've done good, darling. Yes, and if any of these, if any of these announcements, you can always go to whc.life and remind yourself of what's going on here at the Harv. Now, our online audience, don't go anywhere. Shaden's going to be right there and chit-chatting with you and all those things. That's right, with all those things. <laughs> it's a lot. Well, it's a great day here at the Harv, our online family. We're so glad that you are joining us. There's nothing like worshiping our Savior together, being together as a church family. And even though you're not physically here in the building, we know you're there in the spirit, the same power, anointing, the presence flowing, his presence. We know that you can feel it right there where you are. And we're so glad you're there. So be sure to share this service so everybody on your social media, everybody that follows you and that you're following can see this service. Don't be the one that's standing in the way of somebody's ministry miracle of somebody's breakthrough. Share this service. Comment like all service long. You, you're our family. You know the drill. Comment your prayer request. Comment where you're joining and watching us from. We have some family. It's not called World Harvest for nothing. We have family all over the world. We have Tina. We have Eddie who's saying, bless the Lord. Great is his name. Yes, it is. His name is so great. We have Joyce. 
We have Tiffany. We have pastors from all over the world joining us. So comment your prayer request and where you're joining us from. And it's the holiday season. It's holidays at the Harv. So why don't we do something special? Comment your favorite holiday tradition. I know I love Christmas. I think my favorite holiday tradition is probably watching Christmas movies by the fire with my family with a good cup of hot cocoa with the Christmas tree lit. You know, it's classic, but I love it. So comment your, your favorite Christmas traditions. We'll share those. I love seeing everyone's Christmas traditions and what different families do. And I have family Christmas traditions that my family and I have done for generations back. And my great grandma did, my great grandparents did. So comment those and we'll, just, we'll see and compare and have some fun with that. Keep commenting your prayer requests. We want to pray and agree with you. We're family. That's that's what we do. We pray, we agree, we war together in the spirit. We fight against the enemy together. We're stronger together. So keep commenting those prayer requests where you're watching and joining us from. Let's see where some more family is watching and joining us from. Let's see, we have family from Kentucky and Indiana. We were in Kentucky last weekend. We might have been close to you. We have a family from Indiana. I was born in Indiana, fun fact, and so is my mom. People from Canada, family from Canada, keep commenting all over the world. We're so glad that you're here. Share this service, like all service long. We have an audience participation preacher who wants to hear from you. He can, he can hear those comments. He loves when you're commenting. So keep commenting, comment your holiday traditions, your prayer requests, all of the things. We're so glad that you are still joining us. So get ready. Service is going to be back into the top in the tab. Get ready for a wonderful word. We'll see you in there. And everyone joining us online, Instagram, YouTube, social media, we're so glad you're back here with us as well. We had a little meet and greet while you were away saying hello. Back to your seats, everybody. Back to your seats, please. We got the choir with us this Sunday morning. Come on now to help us celebrate the holidays here at the Har. All right, back to your seat. We see who the treble children were in class, huh? Ah, uh, I see you back to your seats, but remain standing. Remain standing. If you've had a seat, just pop back up if you would, please. We appreciate your cooperation and ministry. Yes, yes, yes. Somebody shout me out. What's your favorite Christmas carol? I mean, we're not taking karaoke suggestions, but... <laughs> what is it? Mark, he said, let all mortal flesh be silent. If that doesn't get you in the Christmas spirit, <laughs> I don't know what does. Yes. Mama got run over by a reindeer. One of the classiest carols I could think of, too, sir. Absolutely. Mama got run. To... It's oily. Probably was when she got run over. It squuzzed it out. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Harv, everybody. You know you can have a good time in church. You're joining us online. We're so glad that you are. If you go to a stuffy, dry church where they're not having fun and you're seeing healings, you might want to think about joining the Harv. Just saying. All right, come on. Help us welcome to this platform our pastor, Dr. Rod Parsley, who was looking very sharp in his Christmassy red this morning. Yes, sir. I thought we had a choir song first. After. After? I love you, choir. We miss all our Valor students, though, right? They all went home. I don't know why. They won't let me have a vote in that thing. They let these young people go home for about 17 weeks. That's the truth. That's what it feels like. Sure does. Of course, they're gone three days from me. It feels like 17 weeks. It sure is good to see y'all. Even Dixie over there on the front row looking good this morning. It's wonderful to see you. Are you having a great season? Are you enjoying that rain? I think it ought to snow. Let's just lift our hands and pray for about a foot after service today. <laughs> You may be seated. Well, look at your neighbor and say, I'm so happy to give my money to the kingdom of God. To the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. I just, I just, you know, we've been talking on Wednesday night. Boy, if you're missing it, I, I'm telling you. I have never had such response to any series I've ever done. Any series. 
as this one on orthodoxy. My uh, precious friend David there that helped me uh, get ready for this morning, such a blessing. When are you leaving, David? Next Saturday, so you're not going to help me next Sunday. David is from what part of Canada? Toronto. Does that count? Toronto? Okay, that counts. Anyway, David was asking me today. He said, Pastor, what do you think brought such a hunger for the things of God in the 90s and up to about 2007? Come on. I said, well, it's very, very, it's very simple. God gave a mighty visitation in the 60s, about from the mid-60s to the mid-70s. It was twofold. Number one, it was something called the charismaniac, I mean charismatic renewal. And uh, so many people were a part of that. Roman Catholics and Baptists and Episcopalians and all the other aliens and everybody just got born again and baptized in the Holy Ghost. Now that was at the same time as the Jesus movement. Anybody remember the Jesus? If you can't remember the Jesus movement, you can't remember one of the most glorious times in the body of Christ. Young people were getting baptized by the tens of thousands every day. And I mean, they got it. They didn't make a decision. They had a conversion. They became new creatures in Christ and they loved God with all their heart and they wanted everybody in the whole wide world to get born again. And then the charismatic renewal, of course, everybody got the baptism in the Holy Ghost. Uh, there was a mass exodus from major denominations, not because the people wanted to leave, but because the people that didn't want to move on in the things of God wanted them to leave. Are you with me? So you had all these millions being born again, right? And then you had the Jesus movement. Everybody's getting born again, baptized. Then they all wanted the Holy Ghost. I mean, entire Roman Catholic congregations were baptized in the Holy Spirit without anybody even asking. Baptists, Baptist boys like me. I mean, I was taught speaking in tongues was of the devil. My whole life, that's of the devil. When I got it, I went back to him and I said, well, how come you don't ever hear anybody doing it in the bar or the brothel? Come on. Excuse me while I make so much sense. So everybody got baptized in the Holy Ghost. We didn't know what we had, but he had us. Hallelujah. And because of those three things, the Jesus movement, and the charismatic renewal and the baptism in the Holy Spirit, everybody became passionate about that word because they realized that that word was life. That Jesus didn't stutter when he said, my words are spirit. Well, they like that part and they are life. And so everybody just fell in love with the word of God. So on the heels of those things came what's commonly referred to as the word of faith renewal, where everybody, I mean, you couldn't get near a teaching church. You just couldn't get near one. Uh, everywhere I went, I don't remember going anywhere for 15 to 20 years that more people were not outside the building than could get in the building. And I'm talking about major, we filled up stadiums. We filled up the stadium, then we filled up the overflow rooms, then we got other properties adjacent and we rented them out and filled them up too. That's how hungry people were for the word of God. And I'm praying that that hunger is returning. I'm praying, God, give us that hunger back. Yes, we'd God. rather yes, be in church than any place in the world. Amen. So anyway, that's why I started into this 
teaching on orthodoxy, right and correct opinion, right? Based in rational, traditional truth. To know what we believe and why. Are you with me? I mean, it's one thing to say I believe something, but it's another thing to have that faith rooted and grounded, grounded in the unshakable, undeniable, irreplaceable, inspired, God-breathed, living word of the Almighty God. Now, you've got that. You've got a hold of absolute truth. No more here a truth, there a truth, your truth, my truth, everywhere, truth, truth. There's only one truth. John 17, 17. Father, sanctify them, set them apart, distinguish them, make them differently made. Your word is truth. Mm. So, we've been going through some doctrine. Say doctrine. It sounds like a stuffy word, doesn't it? Sounds like people that, you know, never walk a foot away from the pulpit when they're preaching the Bible. Sounds like something they'd say, right? But that's not true at all. Doctrine is a belief or beliefs. The system held and taught by a church. In other words, we have the doctrine of sin. We have the doctrine of righteousness. We have the doctrine of salvation. We have the doctrine of eschatology. We have the doctrine of Christology. We have the doctrine of pneumatology. And we have a whole lot of those. And I just want to look in on a little bit of one of them. Our financial stewardship is a doctrine. It is a doctrine of the church. Financial stewardship. Do you know that there's only one other subject in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John that Jesus talked more about than money? It wasn't healing. It wasn't salvation. It, it wasn't, uh, you know, church structure. It wasn't the Sermon on the Mount. The only thing Jesus talked more about than your financial stewardship is the subject of love. That's the only one. Now that's astounding to me because you can't find a preacher willing to talk about it. And the reason is he's afraid he'll get canceled. You know the way you, you cancel a preacher, you stop showing up. But look at all the people that haven't stopped showing up by the thousands because they know this book is truth. It does not contain truth. It is truth. Say, hurry up, pastor. Okay, I will. And our financial stewardship, listen to this, is a fundamental barometer, a measuring rod of our discipleship. Because discipleship has to do with observing. If I want to be, I love you so much. I saw you in the hallway today. You just bless my life every time I see you. You're like Elder Canfield. You, you are never down. you always up or getting up. Isn't that right? Always full of joy. I'm not going to pray for you, son. And if I didn't, it was the Holy Ghost wouldn't hurt her to begin with. I love you so much, right? So if I'm going to be your disciple, right, that means more than just following you. It means learning your teachings, learning what you believe in, seeing the way that you carry yourself. So I have to observe you, and then I have to begin to imitate you. This is what a disciple is. We observe Jesus we observe God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, which is another doctrine, the doctrine of the Trinity, right? So we look at Jesus, the author and the finisher of our, I've quoted about 30 scriptures to you already, the author and the finisher of our faith without which it is impossible to please God. 
So when everybody was talking about what would Jesus do, they're actually talking about discipleship. Becoming like our teacher. Didn't she do good helping me illustrate that? Tell her how much you love her. I love you. Okay, so I'm supposed to observe Jesus. Okay, you're staring at me. You're making me nervous. So we have to observe Jesus. Where? We observe him. And then we imitate him. Then we are becoming disciplined or disciples. You with me so far? Are you tracking with me? Are you picking up what I'm laying down? So if we think about Jesus, we know that a key attribute of the character of the Christ we claim we serve is generosity. Do you know anyone that lived a more generous life than Jesus of Nazareth? In fact, he was so generous that your Bible and mine say, greater love has no man than this, that a man would lay down his life for his friends. He was generous. His father was generous. For God so loved, never was more importance placed on any two-letter little monosyllable word than that. God, what so loved that describes how he loved. He so loved this world that he gave, not even himself, one thing for me to lay down my life for you, another thing for you to touch my kids. Now, Miss Joni is the sweetest, most authentic Christian I've ever known in my life. She's so meek, mild, But you touch one of those babies of hers, even though they are in their 30s, she transforms. She is the original transformer. And she will go all county up on you real quick. Yeah. So our God is a God of generosity. No, no inexplicable generosity. You know how I know? Because he loved me. And I know me better than anybody knows me. And I know there was nothing in me to love. Nothing. And he died for me. Suffered. Bleeding by which the very veins of God himself were emptied out in bloody pools beneath his toes on the earth that he himself created. You talk about generosity. Look at those fine clothes you have on. He's a generous God. If you don't believe that, walk out as I often do, very early in the morning while the stars are still up. That's God saying, How do I love thee? Go ahead and try to count the ways. And if this is what it looks like, on this side, Uh that's the floor of heaven. Imagine what the whole place must be. He's a a generous God. Look at you. You look well-fed. Some of us a little more than others. I didn't get this way looking at it. Right? Do you know if you have a bed? A bed. And if you had to decide which pair of shoes to put on today. And if you have some food 
in a refrigerator somewhere. You are in the top 68 percentile. The top 70 percent. Of the world's wealthiest people on earth today. My, my, my. He's been generous yes, yes, with yes. you. We talk about giving gifts at Christmas time. How about this one? Romans 6, 23. For the wages of our sin is death, but the gift of our God. Gift. The gift wrapped up in flesh and bone called Jesus of Nazareth. That gift is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord by what he gave. He's generous. I discovered a thing. You know, at one time we had over 500 employees still at this point. We have 250 or so. We're not building buildings like we did at that time. But I've noticed something. I've noticed that staff are much more generous spending money when it's not their money. <laughs> Anything new is probably not true, and anything true is probably not new. So let me make sure I'm not out on a theological doctrinal ledge here. Have you noticed that it's much easier for your children to spend your money You all are not at all in the Christmas spirit, I can just tell. Now, Lord, forgive all those who are angry today as a secondary emotion that they have gone out and spent good, hard work for money on people they don't even like. Now, for, forgive them, Lord, for getting in that shape. People are more generous with other people's money than they are their own. That's carnal nature. That's not God's nature. God's nature is generosity. And the, the real reason for it is this. What God will ask you for today, and he's going to, what he will ask you for is never something you do not possess. Only for what he put his hand on as his own that you still want to keep. So to take the pressure off, God says, by the way, 10% tithing is old covenant. Because then 10% belonged to him. But in the new covenant, based on better promises, ratified with better blood, he didn't say 10% belongs to me. He said, it's all mine. Wait a minute. It's all mine. And I trust you to take care of a part of it for me. So this morning, just remember, it's a whole lot easier to give God's money than yours. If you really, really, really believe, as I do, that it's all his, that I didn't do anything to get it, and I can't do anything to keep it, except bless him as a disciplined disciple of Jesus and express his generosity. 
So let's do that right now. Everybody online, everybody here, everybody in our branch campuses, every City Harvest Network, Pastor Elkhart, Indiana, we love you and we thank God for you. So we're going to give our tithe, 10% of the sanctified gross income, because that's just an act of obedience. God's miracles manifested by what he does when you obey. Is that true? All right. Does it all belong to him? So why don't we take a minute and ask him what he wants? You know, you, you've asked everybody, right? You asked your kids, what do you want for Christmas? Have you asked Jesus? That's good. It's he that we celebrate. It's he that this season is supposed to point our hearts toward. It's his work that we should be concerned about. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. hallelujah. Father, we just ask you now, what offering would you desire? With what can we praise you, Master? For all that you've done for us. We will give our tithe in obedience. But Father, we want to give an offering this morning. We want to bless you. We want to be like you. We want to be generous. So just speak to every heart, everywhere under the sound of my voice. Would you just speak to them right now? What you'd like for them to do to advance your kingdom and bless their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, those wise men, they had a plan, didn't they? They followed that star for three years, left their homes, left their livelihoods, left their kingdoms, left their families, and followed a star for three years for one reason, to give Jesus a present. Yeah. <laughs> and they were wise. How many of you want to be wise? All right. So let's do something extra. We've asked for everybody that's of a willing heart to help us do all of our holiday outreaches and help us get 150,000 meals to the Horn of Africa, which are already on their way there. All we have to do is pay the bill, and we will in Jesus' name. Amen? So we ought to look for people to bless less fortunate than we are. And so we want to help those starving mothers and children in the Horn of Africa, in Ethiopia, and Somalia, and so forth. So we'll be doing that. We've asked everybody to add at least $25 a week. When we started, it was four weeks away. It's closer now. But if you could sow an extra $25 this Sunday, or you could sow the whole $100, wouldn't that be wonderful? My family and I are sowing an extra $100 every week during this period because we certainly know that it all belongs to Jesus, so we ought to throw it at his feet. So be blessed as you give, and may the God of all comfort comfort your heart and give you joy in Jesus' name. Amen? All right, the information is all around there on the screens and so forth, and we are going to be delighted by the choir. Yes, sir. Now, y'all need, need to do real good because all the Valor students that would be up here at home watching you. So smile real big and let them know you can do all right. You can do just fine. Amen. Here's Pastor Chris, World Harvest Church Choir.
Help us welcome the incomparable Dr. Wendell Lowe. You never seen a miracle. You about to see one right now. Everybody stand on your feet. Come on, let's bless the Savior. Joy to the world. The Lord is come. Let us receive her King. Let every heart prepare to
That was the amazing World Harvest Church Choir and the incomparable Dr. Wendell Lowe. You may be seated now. What you all don't know, what you all don't know, Pastor Chris, bless his heart. Yes, sir. He had worked so hard and gotten everything prepared for today. And then his counterpart, Miss Carrie, got hit with the flu. Yes, sir. And tried to get in here this morning and couldn't but he tossed the ball over there to one of the greatest preachers come on the greatest Hammond B3 organist <laughs> and a singer extraordinaire and he was willing have yes. never done that song right to jump out of here and do it so tell him one more time he's got a great big generous heart yeah. amen <laughs> Woo, we love him are you ready? I want you to say these words, the gospel, the gospel of promise. You ready? Now we celebrate today that Christ Jesus was prophesied. Can you say prophesied? I didn't say prophesied, I said prophesied by the great, the great messianic prophet, Isaiah, probably the greatest of all indicators of the advent of Jesus Christ into this earth realm to save us from ourselves and from each other. He said in the same book as his name, chapter 9 and verse 6, for unto us, say he belongs to me. No, say he belongs to me. For unto us a child is born. Are you glad for it? Notify everybody around you right now. Let every devil know that you're glad that baby was wrapped in swaddling clothes. Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. Here's the important part. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. So all you Democrats... Surrender. All you Republicans, surrender. We're under a different government. We're under the government of heaven, and it is led by a king. It is not a democracy. It is a theocracy. It is a kingship, and Jesus Christ of Nazareth is our king. Shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful. Shout it. Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And then over in Luke chapter 2, it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be taxed. And all went to be taxed, everyone unto his own country. And so Mary and Joseph went up to be taxed. And while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. What if this was your day of deliverance? And she brought forth her firstborn son. She wrapped him in what, swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. And there were shepherds abiding in that same country, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto them and said, Fear not, for I bring you good tidings of great joy. To all which shall be to all people, for unto you this day is born in the city of David a Savior, Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign to you. You will find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the multitude a heavenly host singing and praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, good will toward men. Now, 1 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 19, reads this way. 
Jesus Christ is the Son of God. If you believe it, shout amen. amen. And he has never been, listen to what Paul said. He has never been, Jesus, both a yes and a no. Wow. I wish I had three hours. He has never been a yes and a no. He is absolute truth. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. He has never been yes and no. He has always been and always will be for us a resounding yes. I want you to dig way deep down in a place you didn't know was there and shout yes. 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 For all of God's promises, all is all and all is all will ever be is all and that's all there is to it. All is all. All of God's promises find their yes and their fulfillment in Jesus. Every promise. Every promise. So folks that want to tear two-thirds of your Bible out and throw it away called the Old Covenant certainly have never read the New Covenant because the New Covenant was in the Old Concealed and the Old is in the New Revealed. So there they are. And Jesus is our yes. In him, Jesus, is all fulfillment as his yes. Now watch this. And our amen. Say yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Say yes. Yes. Amen. Not yes and no. Yes and amen. Yes, and so be it. Yes, provided by, given by, fulfilled in, ratified by the shed blood of Jesus. He gave the promise, and then we shout, Amen, and so be it. Stop waiting on God to do something. He already did it. You got your Christmas mind on I said he already did it. Every promise, salvation, yes, and we shout amen. Why? Because all the blessings of God, all the promises of God are conditional. God says, I will do this when and if you do that. But if you're not going to do the that, then he cannot do the this. Because he forever surrendered his right to act independently in your life. In Genesis chapter 1 verses 26 and 27. Let us make a man in our image after our likeness. And give him the man dominion in the earth. So Jesus says yes to every promise. And it is fulfilled when you shout Amen. Amen. That's the way Mary started the whole thing off. When the angel appeared to her, said, Hail Mary, thou art highly favored. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of your womb. Wow. And Mary said, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? She was at least honest. And the angel said unto her, Fear not. For what you shall conceive will be born of the Holy Ghost. And Mary said, well, if that's the way it's going to be, be it unto me according to your word. Say that right now. Be it unto me. Talk to God now. According to your word. Every promise Jesus gave. Do you know that Jesus was born of the lineage of David according to the flesh? Jesus had to come from the line and lineage of David. And he did. Read his genealogy. He came directly as a descendant of the line of the tribe of Judah from King David. 
Hallelujah. All of the promises of God in the Old Testament and the New Testament were ratified, fulfilled by the Lord Jesus Christ and every single one of them are available to every single one of us today as a result of his covenant blood. Your season of doubt, your season of sorrow, your season of trepidation, your season of heartache and fear and heartbreak is over today. There are seven, and I'm going to go fast. There are seven of these promises given to King David, ratified by Jesus. And I want to alert you to this very strategic moment. We are only 14 days left in this calendar year. It is the 17th of December. Only 14 days left in this declared year of agreement. In this year where agreement is essential. And when sudden miracles are our expectation. Because the atmosphere of expectancy is the breeding ground of your miracle. Seven, shout it, seven. That's the biblical number of perfection. Hmm. Completion. The Lord Jesus made seven. You ought to get my series on it because you still think he said, my father and my God, why have you forsaken me? He never said that. How could he have said that and at the same time say, I'll never leave you? Get the series. While he was on that angry, mean, biting beam, he spoke a mere seven times. Statements bolted there between heaven and earth. Last words are important. Hmm. You have a loved one that passed? You remember their last words to you? I do. Jesus' final words are forever, forever etched on eternity's canvas and forever engraved with the flaming finger of the Holy Spirit on the fleshly tablets of our hearts. The, they were these. It is finished. And all the saved people said, to that promise, amen. amen. <laughs> You're catching on. Three English words for one Greek, Andrew, accounting term, to tell us die. Not simply that something has come to an end, but that a debt has been canceled completely, fundamentally, and permanently stamped, paid in full. Nothing broken. Nothing missing, nothing lacking. Man, I'm preaching better than you're shouting. After Joshua, who had been appointed by the living God as the successor to Moses, led Israel to obey the Lord's command and marched seven times around the walls of Jericho. The walls came a-tumbling down. Naaman the leper was told to dip seven times in the Jordan, and he came up, and his flesh was like a baby's. What I'm explaining to you is that seven brings victory. And the language of defeat is silence, and the language of victory is shouting. The language of clapping is authority. So today, you and I, we're going to come into absolute agreement to receive all seven of these extraordinary promises from the most often quoted verses of the Psalter. You know, your Bible contains 
not only the model prayer, the Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. And let us not fall into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and thine is the power, and thine is the glory forever. But it also contains the prayer book of the Christian church. That's the Psalms or the Psalter. God's inerrant, ever-living, life-giving word must become the foundation of our praying and of our very lives. What amazing grace. Think about it. What amazing grace that he without beginning of days or end of life gives these most profound and powerful prophetic and poetic words whereby you and I can speak to him in absolute perfection and profound assurance. Somebody shout, blessed assurance. Now I'm going to declare them over you. And I want you to remember, these are the decrees of Jesus, and they need your amen. They are the law of the king. Grab every one of them with bulldog tenacity and unshakable faith. Here we go. Promise number one, divine presence. Look at Psalm 23, 1. It begins with this statement of unwavering confidence. The Lord is my shepherd. This is the living God Almighty sworn guarantee for you and for me that we will always and forever abide in his holy presence. The sheep depend on the shepherd's watchful eye and perpetual presence for their safety from every adversity and every attack, from every danger and every difficulty. The shepherd alone will lead them to abundant pastures of comfort and care. In my many, many travels to the ancient land of Israel, which you should be praying for right now, I saw many, many, many flocks of sheep on virtually every hillside. But I never saw a flock of sheep without a shepherd. The Lord Jesus himself identified himself as the good shepherd in John chapter 10. And he did it for a reason. He who never sleeps, he who never slumbers, is permanently, personally present with us. He is the parakletos, the one called alongside us to help. I heard a preacher one time, he thought he was preaching, but he wasn't. He said, you all better obey the law. If the speed limit's 55 and you go 56, Jesus jumps out. Where would he jump out to and from? He fills all. Here it is in Hebrews 13, 5. I will, good God Almighty, help him to get this. I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. Through the blessed Holy Ghost of God, not only is he with you, he is in you. That self same spirit that invaded the borrowed tomb of Joseph of Arimathea raised to life again the three day dead body of the prince of God is now resident personally present within your mortal body here's that promise John 14 16 I will pray the father and he will send you another comforter one exactly alike in every essential detail and quality that he may be with you forever, even the spirit of truth that the world cannot 
receive. Shout, thank God I'm not the world. Shout, he lives in me. And he will remain in you. I, I can't help it. I need to tell somebody. 68% of Americans are on antidepressants. I got to talk to somebody. I got to talk to somebody. I got to tell you. You are never single mom. Lonely, unmarried adult. Only person in your family that knows Jesus. You are never alone. You are never abandoned. The very God that stretched out the heavens and the earth walks with you, lives in you. He is Jehovah Shammah, the God who is eternally present with you. Providential promise number two is this. Somebody shout provision. Psalm 23, this is all in Psalm 23. Psalm 23, verse 1, part B, is one of the greatest and most boldly emphatic de declarations of faith in the entirety of the 66 books of your Bible. Here it is. I want you to grab a hold of it. I, I'm not worried about somebody else, I shall not want. For any good thing, I shall not want for companionship. I shall not want for joy. I shall not want for hope. I shall not want for blessing. I shall not want for family. I shall not want for an automobile. I shall not want more of God's presence on my life. I shall not want more anointing. I shall not want somebody shout. I can almost hear the sweet psalmist from chapter 34, verse 10. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want for any good thing. Let me just take a minute and shout, God is a good, good father. That's who he is. That's who he is. And I am loved by him. That's who I am. That's who I am. Shout, it's me. Matthew 7, 11. I like that. 7, 11. That's my son's birthday. Matthew 7, 11 prophesies that God himself meets our needs. I thought I heard an amen to that promise. If you then, here's what he said, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give good things to those that ask him? You better hear this preacher today. It has never been, nor is it now, God's plan nor purpose for any of his children to live lives of deprivation and want. Get that out of your mind. The old song said, every need he is supplying. Plenteous grace he bestows every day. My way gets brighter and the longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. The more that I Love him. More love he bestows. Each day is like heaven. My heart overflows. The longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. The bondage of lack. Ugh, I, I don't even like to say it. The bondage of paycheck to paycheck. The bondage of going to bed sad and getting up depressed. The bondage of it all is part and parcel of the curse of the law. Now you get this. It is not because God's failing to provide for his children. What kind of God is that? You let your children go hungry? Oh, I know you believe in a God of just enough. 
we must never ever be timid nor reluctant to ask. In fact, Jesus commanded it so in John 16, 24, until now you've asked nothing in my name. But hereafter, whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it you that your joy may be full. Jesus didn't stammer. He didn't stutter. He said it without hesitation. Ask and keep on asking. Seek and keep on seeking. Knock and keep on knocking. Peace is Jehovah Shalom's promise number three. Psalm 23, two. He leads me beside still waters. Hey now, <laughs> that'll make a thirsty, tormented soul just shout. Oh. How we desperately need the Holy Ghost peace in this post-COVID, weirded out, wicked, whacked out world. Peace. That God given, that deeply rooted and unshakable inner peace. Peace in the midst of the storm, which this world can never give you, friend. Nor when God gives it, can hell shake out of you. Hey, hey, hey. I'm not talking about your garden variety kind of peace here. I'm talking about supernatural God-given heaven-sent peace. The living God, by the way, spoke peace into the earth when he told his angels to announce the birth of his son to some shepherds working the third shift. So long, long ago, here it is, suddenly, there was with the angel a multitude, the shepherds, a multitude of the heavenly host saying glory to God, peace on earth, peace on earth. How could God let such horrific acts go on in our world has nothing to do with God. Has to do with man's rebellion 6,000 years ago. It's always been available. That kind of peace since angels sang happy birthday. And shepherds showed up to see if it was true. To every troubled soul today, Philippians chapter 4, verse 7, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding and comprehension, keep, guard, garrison your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. That's why I never worry when storms may come my way. I know that he is near to drive away my fear so I can smile and say, I know the peace speaker. I know him by name. I know the peace speaker. He controls the wind and waves. And when he says, peace be Still, they have to obey. I'm so glad I know the peace speaker. Mm. I know him by name. We used to sing it this way. Peace, peace. Wonderful peace. Coming down from the Father above. Sweep over my spirit forever I pray. In fathomless billows of love number four protection shout god's got me covered psalm 23 verse 4 i will fear no evil some terribly sad and misguided folks believe that god's simply indifferent disinterested 
to humanity, to our plight, to our everydayness. That God is just a mystical higher power who wound the world up like a clock and then stood back to see what would happen. My dear brother, my dear sister, our God is actively, intensely involved in every aspect of our lives, spirit, soul, and body. How could you read stories like Abraham in Egypt, Jonah in the belly of the great fish, or Daniel in the lion's den, or Jesus passing through a crowd intent on stoning him? How does that not make it obvious to you that the living God protects those who put their trust in him? There is no question. Evil exists. The psalmist speaks of walking through. Dear God, we've all visited that place. Walking through the valley of the shadow of death. But he doesn't stop there. He adds, when I walk through that dark valley. When I walk through the lonesome night. I will fear no evil. Dark shadows are going to appear as unwelcomed visitors at every door. These are the conditions of living in a fallen world. Even so, fear must vacate the premises when faith comes on the scene. Fear and faith can't live in the same mind. They can't live in the same heart. And they for sure can't live in the same vocabulary. Psalm 81, 10, open your mouth with a mighty decree and I will fulfill it. Now you'll see the words that I speak, so shall it be. We have to face every challenge of everyday life being armed with words like 1 John 5, 14 and 15. This is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his word, he hears us. And because he, we know he hears us, we have steadfast confidence and assurance that we have granted to us for our present possession everything we've asked him for. Romans 8, 31. If God be for me, Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against me in judgment, I shall condemn. Psalm 81, 1, let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Here's God's answer to fear. Isaiah 41, 10, fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, I will help thee, I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. Ah, where are we? I got to hurry. Four is the promise of omnipotence. It's the almighty's promise of power. Psalm 23 verse 5. Thou anointest my head with oil. Do it God. Anointing with oil is always accompanied by a bestowing of supernatural power. Prophets were anointed. Priests and kings were anointed with oil. That became the sign that they were, watch this preacher, set apart. Different. Distinguished. It's a symbol of God sanctifying and consecrating power. King Jesus, according to Acts 10.38, was so anointed. See how God anointed him 
with the Holy Ghost and power. What did he do with it? He went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. You may not realize it, my dear friend, but you got power. You got power over demons. You got power over depravity. You got power over disease, power over Satan, power over sickness, power over sin, power over temptation, power over brokenheartedness. You got power. Shout, I am anointed with the mighty power of God. Promise number six. You're going to love this one. All you naysayers, get your crayons out. Send me a letter. Post how much you don't believe it so I can block you. <laughs> Promise number six. Watch my word. Prosperity. It's the final phrase of Psalm 23, 5. Nobody dreamed it up. Here it is. My cup runneth over. What a revelatory picture of true abundance. The enemy of your soul wants you to fixate on having just enough. But not around here. We do this. More than enough. Too much overflow and double for our trouble. Everything in God's kingdom is mutually exclusive and diametrically opposed to everything in the kingdom you came out of. You hear this preacher. God's principle is never just enough because there are always those who don't have enough. So how are we going to reach the Horn of Africa with 150,000 meals? How are we going to save another 15,000 babies at the women's clinic? Fill my cup, Lord. If I wasn't so dignified, I'd go. Pfft. Fill my cup. I was a little old boy when he sang that song. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. And I tugged on my mama's dress. Women wore dresses back in that day. And I tugged on her dress. And I said, I said, why don't they lift up a bucket? I mean, I was only eight, but I figured God would get a bucket just as easy as a cup. Then I found out later, you sow a cup, you'll reap a bucket. You sow a bucket, you'll reap a wheelbarrow. You sow a wheelbarrow, you'll reap a barn full. You sow a barn full, you'll own the county. God wants your cup to run over. He gave us that command that produces overflowing abundance in one profoundly prophetic verse in Luke 6, 38. Give and it shall be given unto you good measure pressed down running over shall men give unto your bosom for with the measure you give it shall be given to you again number seven perfection perfection interesting that it's the seventh promise perfection Verse 6, I will dwell. Yeah. <laughs> Woo, none of the rest of it matters if you can just get to this point. And I will dwell, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter how you go through this life, long as you make it. I shall dwell. This life is like a vapor, seen then gone. I shall dwell. Once I get there, I'm never going to have to leave. Woo. And I shall dwell, live there in the house of my God forever. Listen, sir, soon and very soon, some of us about to go and see the king. In the northernmost part of the intergalactic nebula in the constellation Orion, there's a huge gaping black hole. They say that it's 16 trillion, sounds like the national debt, 600 
and 40 billion miles in diameter. You could fit 90 Milky Way galaxies just into the opening. How beautiful heaven must be. Mount Zion in the sides of the north, the city of the great king, the abode of God, that place of the eternal throne of our creator and loving savior. Here it is in Jesus' words. You believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. And I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Get this line, that where I am, there you may be also. That's perfection, my dear saint. That's perfection. Beat our plows and weapons, beat our swords and weapons into plowshares. Study war no more. God himself wipe all the tears away from our eyes. My great God in heaven, amen. Soon and very soon, we'll be leaving here. But I don't want you to be confused about it. It, it really won't matter if the gates of heaven are made of wood and swing on leather hinges. Won't matter if the mansions are nothing but cardboard shanties. If there's mud in the streets knee deep. If King Jesus is there, it will be heaven for me. Every head bowed, every eye closed, everyone standing. Everyone standing, every head bowed, every eye closed. If you get a little wobbly, just grab a hold of the seat in front of you. Hallelujah. Well, all seven of those promises belong to you. But remember what I told you in the very beginning? Jesus says they're yes to you. But he's waiting on your amen. Be it unto me, as Mary said, according to your word. I know that there are several, I feel it, here in this room, a multitude watching live around the world, nearly 200 nations across the vast City Harvest network of churches over in Elkhart, Indiana, right here in this room. You don't have that peace, that blessed assurance that if Jesus comes or if you should die, you know we don't look for death, but it's been looking for you since your first breath. The death toll among human persons remains stubbornly at 100%. May not be today, but it will be one day. Usually a lot sooner than we think that you will stand before God, the God that created you and gave you all these blessings, including eternal life. And he was just waiting on you to accept them. Jesus already paid for your eternal salvation in heaven. But he's waiting on your amen. It, he's waiting on you to accept it. And so I want to give you that opportunity right now. With every head bowed and every eye closed, this time tomorrow I may be in heaven. You may not. I pray that's not the case. And I want to give you the opportunity. You, you say, but pastor, I'm a good person. You can stand in a garage, but it won't make you a car. You can go to church. It won't take you to heaven. You have to accept God's only begotten Son as the price paid for your sins 
and be reconciled to God through him by accepting him as your Lord and Savior. I want you to do that right now. No one can do it for you. Do it right now. Make the decision you'll be really glad you made on Christmas morning. He's waiting. He shed his blood. He died on the cross. He raised from the dead. He's just waiting on you to accept it. Won't you do it now? As I count to three, when I say three, raise that hand. We're going to pray. If you're watching online, type in the word save, S-A-V-E, as thousands every week do. We're going to pray together at the end of that prayer. You'll be as sure for heaven as if you were already there. This is it on three. Raise that hand. One, two, three. Leave it up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. At least twenty here in this room. Those of you online, remember, type in S-A-V-E. We'll send you literature. We'll pray for you. Everybody, as loud as you can, join in this mighty chorus of saying yes to Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father I, come I come to you just as I am. As I, am. I ask you this day you to, forgive to forgive my sins. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Give, me life. Give me eternal life. Satan, I renounce you. Self, you're no longer in control. I accept, believe, and confess Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. I'm on my way to heaven, and it feels so good to be forgiven, I could almost just clap and shout. And I'm no longer a slave. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. One more time, say it out. And I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. Say, I am a child of God. You're glad about it. Shout Come amen. Come on, give him a great big hand clap of praise this morning. Yes, Pastor sir. Chris has some instruction for you. Because everybody wants a holiday ham. Yes, sir. We'll get there in just a moment. First, we've got our series on Wednesday nights. Orthodoxy, what we believe and why. Amen. It's foundational. We need it. It's a blessing. And you, we want you to be a part of it. So listen, we have supplemental textbooks, as we call it, available. It's revival if and culturally incorrect. Thank you, David. Both of those books for only $20 in the East Foyer today. For those of you joining us online, you're not left out. We've got that for you available at whc.life. Get it, be reading it, and come hungry in the tab or online with us. If you're joining us online, social media, don't go anywhere because someone is coming with some information just for you. Amazing service. What an amazing word. That's a word that you need to share with everybody that you know. Those seven points, so powerful, so amazing, so easy to understand, yet so powerful and so just incredible. So rewatch that service, rewatch that message, send it to everybody. You know how powerful that is. Well, I'm so glad that you're still joining us. You're our family. We're so glad that you're still here. Be sure to keep commenting your prayer request. We'll pray and agree with you. Share this service. Don't be the one to stand in the way of somebody's miracle. Share this service. Even though it's over, you can still share it and people can rewatch it and see it. Be sure to do that all service long. And if you made that decision, made that decision if you just prayed that prayer, made the best decision you will ever make, prayed the, the best prayer you could ever pray to make the Lord your personal Lord and Savior. We celebrate you. We're so happy for you. And we have a gift for you. It's a book called New Direction that will get you in the right in the right start, the right track of where you're going in this new place of life. You can just click the, the link in the comment section. We'll send that right to you. It's been a wonderful day here at The Harv. We pray that you felt the Lord and been so blessed, as blessed we, as we've been here. God bless you. It's holidays. Have a wonderful holiday season and we'll see you right here Wednesday night.
Sowing into the kingdom of God has never been easier or more secure than with smart giving. Any smartphone will work to use your smart giving, open your text messaging app, and send a message to number 45777. In the message of your text, type the amount of your gift, space WHC. If it's your first time giving, you'll receive a secure link to set up your account. Select your home campus, enter your giving method, and where you would like to receive your instant giving receipt. If you already registered, the process is the same. Just send a text message to 45777. Type the amount of your gift, space WHC. You'll receive your receipt immediately. If you prefer, you can also sew online at whc.life or by phone or mail. Just call the number on your screen or send your gift to the address displayed. Calvary, uh, 
love. Grace, powerful grace, grace that restores and rescues me. Grace, powerful grace, I sing the song of the reed. 